1994, a homebrew club started up in Wyoming's capital city of Cheyenne. It started out small, but it became one of the first homebrew clubs on the front range and has grown exponentially since then. This club is called the High Plains Drafters, and 2019 was their 25th anniversary. I've had the privileges last year learning about this club's history, what homebrewing is, and how all of this impacts the club members' lives. I sat down with four of the members to discuss the High Plains Drafters, who each shared their stories, their expertise on homebrewing, and their joys of running a successful homebrew club and competition for the last 25 years. Homebrewing is a simple yet complex hobby where brewers make beer in their homes, garages, or basements. There's no true way to make a good beer other than years of experimentation, and brewers tend to have their own methods of creation. Homebrewing, you know, at one level is, is, is very simple. I mean, there's basically four ingredients. You've got your water, you've got hops, you've got malt, and you have yeast. And uh, I use uh, what's called a um, RIM system, recirculating infusion mash system. So uh, what that means is I have a big pot that I add a bunch of crushed malt to and then add water to that. And I hold it at a certain temperature, 152 degrees, let's say. And that temperature allows the natural enzymes in the malt to convert the starches into sugars. And when all those starches are converted, I transfer that into another vessel, a boil kettle, rinse out all that, um, all that malt into that, into that boil kettle, collect 13 gallons of it, and then, uh, and then boil it. And when it's boiling, I add hops. So the, the hops act to kind of offset that sugar and add some character and bitterness to it. And when it's done boiling, I'll cool it down really fast and then add the yeast. And the yeast will ferment that beer for a week or two. And then uh, simply a, a, at that point, a process of adding uh, a little bit more sugar and yeast to carbonate it or just adding carbonation. And then you have beer. So it's, uh, it's not that hard, uh, but that's the process I use today. The High Plains Drafters Homebrewing Club was founded in 1994 by Dave and Shelley Clemens. They started the club to get more business for their homebrew store they owned at the time, and since there were only four other homebrewing clubs on the front range at that time, this club would help grow their business. The beginning months were all about organization and choosing the right location for meetings. Bill Briggs and Paul Day were two of the original members to join the club, and here's what they said about the club's humble beginnings. It was kind of free form a little bit. I mean, everybody was still trying to catch their, get, get their feet and, and a lot of people were just learning to homebrew, didn't know a lot about it. And there was a lot of planning and trying to organize the club into, you know, what everybody decided they wanted it to be. We talked about articles of incorporation and, you know, club, kind of club rules. And um, we had surveys about what the interests were for club members. Do you, are you interested in judging beer? Are you interested in just sampling beer or primarily brewing it? So we kind of gauged that interest level among club members and, uh, and tried to figure out, you know, just, just what we we're all about. You know, it was a different atmosphere than now because now we're kind of grounded in the same, you know, we do a lot of the same sort of things all the time. So. It's a little more structured now than it was back in the original days. And with all the planning came a lot of events that the High Plains Drafters had put on over the years, such as brewery tours and social events. Another one of the original club members, Brian Mertz, describes one of his favorite annual events. One of the other events we uh, have done for almost 20 years of the club, I guess, is basically we, we started out with what was called the Holiday Hop, which was our annual Christmas party. And it started out with like four houses and they went from house to house. We had beer at each house, we had food at each house, but we didn't have enough time with four stops to sample all the beers or have all of the food. So it gets down to what we call the holiday stop, I guess, basically where we go out, somebody hosts our Christmas party where we all bring in different beers and we sample beers and which is you know, open to everybody that wants to come and some of their guests. The club has changed and grown over the last 25 years. But one tradition that continues to stay is their own homebrewing competition called the Eight Seconds of Froth. 
The way that competition works and in, in, in homebrew competitions in general is uh, people that want to see their beers evaluated enter um, two bottles and describe the style that they're trying to uh, recreate or emulate. And a lot of work goes into making the eight seconds of froth successful. It takes multiple steps and months of planning. So I took over organizing eight seconds of froth from uh, the last guy, Brian, uh, about five years ago, I think, maybe four or five years ago. Um, and, and he had it really well organized. There was a, he gave me a lot of tips, what to do, or how, to, how to organize the judges and all. So the competition is involved with, with several stages. First one is to get our venue squared away where we're going to have the competition. And uh, after that, we start calling uh, homebrew stores and uh, homebrew supplies and uh, some other breweries and things. And we start um, asking them if they can send us anything, uh, free stuff that we can give away at the contest. And what we do is we use that as prizes. And uh, we do a pretty good job, I think. Our, we have a lot of people that call and, and uh, get some nice stuff that's used in home brewing. Um, the other aspects of it are getting the judges organized, uh, getting all the beers in, getting them all sorted, getting them all laid out. How we sort all those out, uh, this building that we're in is where we sort them all. So we'll, we'll drive down south and hit several locations for all those drop-off locations and bring all the beer back and up north in Casper. Bring all that beer back and in one day, we'll lay them all out and then we'll start figuring out, okay, so-and-so brought this beer and then we'll lay them out in the right categories. And so it used to take us just all day, all day and late into the night to, to sort our beers out and, and we've since changed that up and uh, we just recently went through it and it was like five hours and, and we had them all sorted and packaged it up and, and put in their cases and, and ready to go. When I took over the, the competition, we didn't have any software uh, that we used to, to organize it, right? And since then we've, we've moved on to a, an online software registration where the people are putting in those uh, entries and, and keeping them organized. So we've jumped up to 370 some odd this year for entries. The original competition was 50 or 60 entries back in the early days and now the majority of the time, you know, over the last 25 years, it's been in the 200, and, 200 to 250 category, but we're now averaging around 350. And because we're local, we get quite a few from Wyoming and a lot from the Colorado Front Range. There's probably two-thirds of everything we get is from Wyoming and Colorado. And then the rest are shipped in from other states in the country. After all the planning, the 8 Seconds of Froth contest begins. The event lasted all day with hours and hours of judging. You know, I, I never would have known that there was a such thing as judging beer if it weren't for this club. And I jumped all over that early on, back in the early 90s, and uh, got into judging beer and, and have since, you know, went through the ranks of judging. And, um, and now, you know, one of the few master beer judges around here. So that's been a lot of fun. When we first started judging beers, we had guidelines, we had style guidelines that did listed all these, but we weren't, a lot of us in Cheyenne were not trained judges, but then we started taking an exam. It's almost like doing a graduate level exam where you're getting 10 very technical questions where you're having to talk about the history of brewing, talking about sampling beers, beer styles, sampling those same beers while you're actually taking the exam. and writing up critiques on the beers that you're judging. And when I finally took my exam, I, there were only five judges in all of Wyoming, and that lasted for about 10 years. And then eventually we got more judges, and now we've gotten much better uh, with running more sensory and training sessions and everything else, and that we might have 10 or 15 judges now in Wyoming. There are many different methods for how the beers are judged. This ensures that each competitor's brew is carefully evaluated. When you're sampling a beer, you're looking, you're doing an appearance, so you're looking at to see how the clarity, what it looks like, how much head there's on the beer. You're doing an initial sensory thing to get the aroma of the beer, so it's supposed to have certain aromas for that style, whether it's malty, whether it's sweet, whether it's hoppy, whether floral notes are coming in, different unique things from that. 
Uh, you taste the beer to actually taste it and is it bitter, is it sweet, is it malty, is it toasty, is it roasty, or does it have some other flavors? And then you look at the carbonation to actually see if it's bubbly and you, you can actually, you know, get, you can actually smell all of the different uh, good things you're supposed to. If it's a flat beer with no carbonation, it's not going to have any of those effects. And based on that, you basically score beers from a score for like from zero to 50. And so a good beer is going to be scoring up in the uh, about 30s. Uh, fairly good beer is going to be up in the 40s. And then the real good beer is going to be in maybe a 43 to 45 or something like that. It's real hard to really hit that 50 level and stuff like that. A, a, a beer judge contest is, is um, it's like a dog show. Right, and uh, I use that as an analogy basically because if you've got the best dachshund in the world and you put it into a great date category, it's going to do horrible. So you have to make sure you get your beer in the right category. Uh, as a home brewer, when you enter a competition, you brew a beer, it might not hit the style you tried to brew it to, but you're going to be judged to how it tastes and smells and looks and everything else. So then you bring it into the club meeting or you take it to several of your friends that are experienced and let them sample it. They can fine tune it and tell you where, even though you tried to brew a pale ale, it maybe is more of a cream ale. You might want to enter it in the cream ale, you probably score more points and do better. The judges will kind of give you a lot more insight into uh, whether the beer hits the style and more importantly, to what degree um, things you did when you were brewing it affected the, the taste. So you can get a lot of feedback that helps you brew better. The cool thing about beer is that uh, there's an amazing diversity of beer out there. And it's really fun to um, explore the diversity of beer. So you can spend a lifetime, like, like many of us have, exploring all that diversity, and that's just a lot of fun. As you get more into it, as you get more of a, an appreciation for all the different flavors you can get out of it, you just want to try more. I like, you know, brewing beer. I like beer, so I enjoy the challenge of trying to make a good one myself. So that, and the club is a good learning environment for being able to, you know, get better at doing that. I like getting new, new breweries excited. I want to, the old kiss or keep it simple stupid principle, but I want to get new people excited. I don't want to scare people off. Uh, but really the, the coolest thing about the club has been the cool people you get to hang around with. Uh, people that appreciate good beer and you find out you got a lot in common with them. I like the club because there's a, just such a wide diversity of individuals that are in the club brewing. Yeah. Um, guys that have been brewing for you know 20 years to, to people that have just started and when a new person brings in a beer and and those guys sit there and go yeah this is really good this is right on tap it, it I think it shows you can see the individual and uh, they're, they're you know they're pretty proud and it's fun so I enjoy that aspect of it watching watching new brewers come in watching them improve their skills try for something special so after 25 years the High Plains drafters are left looking to the future. A future with the hopes that the club will continue to grow for the next 25 years.